welcome back and just thank you all for returning. Um, there was a request on uh, Monday to discuss Link and we are going to discuss Link. <laughs> and in addition to that, um, when going through it, I thought that uh, there were a few other concepts that we could cover that would fortify knowledge and link and also hopefully it's stuff that you've encountered before but possibly not and maybe it's something you've encountered but didn't realize what it was called and uh, so the basic idea for tonight we are going to cover uh, just the four main uh, principles of object-oriented programming I'm just going to cover those really fast again those are things that you should kind of understand even if you don't know what they're called but uh, at least have heard the, the words or the terms. And then we'll talk about type safety briefly. And I was going to cover generics and delegates. And then we'll go into the link and lambda expressions. So that is the idea for this evening. So this is slightly straying from the original curriculum that we sent out because we didn't know who all was going to be in here for the first time. So I didn't want to waste you guys' time talking about loops and things like that if this was a group that seemed like they pretty much had already covered that material. So um, to keep you engaged uh, and so forth. So um, talking about object-oriented principles, uh, the f anybody want to throw out those four biggies that we talk about? Abstraction, encapsulation, encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. Inheritance. Good, excellent. Okay, so um, going through those, what is encapsulation? I don't know. Where you hide the information within an object? Um, yes, um, uh, it is the concept. You're going to take. Um, you can take related information and group it together and then sort of hide it a little bit. That's, uh, I've heard it described a lot of different ways and that's, that's one of the, the techniques. But um, just overall, we're kind of just gonna kind of group everything together and, um, and yeah, a little bit hide. I, I think that a million years ago when I was taking programming classes, the example that I got given to me was a television set where everything was, you had a TV but you don't really know how it works on the inside, sort of. So um, that's how it was explained to me. And I think that as the years have gone by, it has sort of evolved a little bit more. But um, in any case, um, so that's encapsulation. So these are things you guys have, have heard of at least, yeah? Okay, how about abstraction? That's like having an overview and not getting into the real details. I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's good. Like just a like a higher level representation of something without any specifics, good. All right, and then inheritance. Um, being able to copy something held from, a, a, from something to the other, like. Right, you have a base class yeah. and, then, and then your subclasses inherit some you of the details, yeah. but then they implement their own things. Mm -hmm. right. All right, and then finally polymorphism. Well, it's like polymorphism is like you can have a, like same names with different kind of attributes to it and then you can use the same kind of function like same uh, name function for different things so you can have more than one usage of it some mm -hmm. right um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it and um and my definition which is i think pretty close is just your ability to respond differently um depending on your parameter type and things like that too all right, so great. So we're pretty familiar with basic principles for um, object-oriented. Um, next, we can jump into type safety. Do y'all know what type safety is? No. No? Okay. Great. One of the things that we want to do when we're programming, right, is that we don't want to screw up our data types if we're expecting one thing and then given another. But we are programmers and we have a little bit of control. And so I'm going to switch over, hopefully, to my Surface tablet, okay? And um, open up a little 
little project. Just to demonstrate it, you probably understand it even if you don't know what the name of it is. I'm sure you've probably encountered this before. So, when we're dealing with data types, I mean, your variables are memory locations, right? So, um, when you declare something as a data type, it controls how you're actually managing that memory. So, if the computer is expecting an integer, giving it a string is not going to work. And, and, and it does operations differently uh, based on what data type it is. So what I have here, this is like real, real simple. So I have um, a variable f called object. So it's of type object, and anything can be an object, right? So, um, er, oh, bigger. what we agreed that y'all could see, yeah? Okay. All right, so I have the object, F, and, you know, objects are a real base class. And, and we just set it equal to five, just a, a, an integer value, okay? Now, what I'm allowed to do is, generally, I'm allowed to cast a value if I know that it's a certain type. What I've attempted to do <laughs> is, cast f as a string. Now even though we know that 5 can be represented as a string, it treats it differently in memory. And so what um, this is actually preventing me from doing is casting that. It's, it's telling me, hey, you can't do that because this is a different type. Now you do the same thing. Some of them, if we go here, we try to cast as an int. So it's basically inferring the type of f, but not let me explicitly cast to a different type. Now, um, if I change this to 5, because f is 5 now, and we know that it's an integer, we have, we have no problems with that. So, um, and then, you know, you can, it doesn't matter what data type you, you're using, whatever you're entering in, it, it has to match. And so, um, one of the things that Visual Studio is very good at doing is checking this for you and, and looking ahead and saying, you know, that's really not going to work when you get, uh, when you start actually trying to run. So, um, when we talk about type safety, what we want to do is make sure that we are not trying to take one data type and store it as another, that we're forcing um, a conversion. We're like, we're not telling the computer to explicitly change a data type, okay? So is this something that, looking at it, you're like, oh yeah, okay, I got it. Just wasn't quite sure what to call it. So um, one of the things that I, I do want to point out, because um, I think sometimes people don't necessarily think about programming this way. Maybe you do. Um, but uh, it is a language, and getting familiar with the terms is really important. And not that being able to do things isn't important. You know, getting in and working on your code is obviously useful, but really understand the language of it um, because we're always having to communicate with each other. And I think that that might be one of the more difficult things that we do in our career is be able to talk to one another um, on the same level. And I would say probably majority of you are going to be working on a team. I know the three of us are on a team and we work in the same room and we have meetings on meetings on meetings where we're like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. No, 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 that's not what, but you know, and so communication is important and understanding the terminology that you're using is gonna be something that you need to, to work on because again, it is it is a language and there's a reason they call them programming languages, right? So um, that's one of the reasons that we're going into this. So I don't want to jump in and start talking about certain things and then maybe you're not really comfortable with what I mean by something. So um, if I use a term that you don't understand, I will do my best to explain what I mean by that. So um, please stop me and don't be embarrassed. Also, I forgot to mention on Monday, sometimes when I get real comfortable, 
I start talking fast. If I do that, y'all slow me down because I do. I don't want to. You know, the the more comfortable I get, like the more likely I am to forget that I am talking to a room full of people. So, anyway, all right. So, does anyone have any questions about type tech? Do you kind of understand the the concept? And all right. So we'll move through this pretty quickly then. Excellent. Okay. The next topic that we're gonna to cover is generics. I'm going to add, I'll add the other slides back into this and um, and I'll post them. Did you guys see the slides? I created a repository out on Git with the slides from Monday night and um, so if you guys want them, I, I've never been one to use slides very much anyway so uh, I'm, I'm going to try my best to give you useful ones but mostly they're just kind of a Here's kind of what I'm talking about, so, um, and I'm switching back and forth quite a bit, I think, but um, I got real used to having two monitors at my desk, and <laughs> so I'm having a little bit of trouble giving it up I'm in here, so. All right, so let's talk about a generic. Do you know what a generic is? Do you know what a generic is? Hmm? <laughs> Anybody? Say again. Like a template in C++? Or just in, or just in general, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, what we do um, with generics, and this is, uh, I said that because that was the first thing I thought of whenever I started looking at generics. And um, I was, I, I took a C++ class like you know, a million years ago, and um, I vaguely recall templates and sort of the idea of them. And, um, so, like the idea of the word itself, a template is um, is a good e example um, of kind of what it is. And so, if you look at the definition we have here on our slide, um, generics make it possible to write classes and methods that operate identically on multiple data types. So, what you could be looking at, um, you may have some type of method um, that is going to have to perform certain tasks, right? And, sorry, I'm getting So, it's not gonna be the same type of thing where you have actions that are gonna be performed differently depending on data types, right? Because sometimes you'll, you'll, ha you'll encounter that where you have some method and um, I mean we see this a lot with, with inheritance when you're um, you're driving your base classes and maybe you're calculating, and these are classic examples, like you're calculating the area of a circle or you're calculating the area of a, a square and you have to perform them differently depending, right? This isn't that, <laughs> okay? Um, it's, it means that basically you're going to be performing the exact same action, however you need to make sure that you're using the same data type as um, for every uh, everything that you pass in. So we see this a lot, um, they're used a lot with your collections basically, like your lists and things like that. And, um, and I've got an example that we'll do with dictionaries. But um, it allows you to basically say, hey, we've got some data type. And right, it doesn't matter what kind of data type it is, but then I want you to take this data type and perform certain actions on it, okay? Now, it can be, we can use generics in classes, we can use them in methods things like that. But whatever action is taken, it has to perform the exact same way. Now, instead of having to go in and write, uh, you know, five different methods that do the same thing but accept a different data type, what we can do is use a generic and say, okay, give me some type and then do, you know, these 12 things on that particular item. So. Um, <clears throat> when we do this, this shortens up our code a lot because obviously you don't have to write the same method and I don't know about y'all, I do that copy pasting a lot, but um, the other thing, even if you, have, if you have four different methods to do it, then, and you decide to change the way it functions for um, any of them, then they all have to change. And um, so that becomes tedious and, and so forth. So, um, this gives us, generics give us 
less code that we have to actually update. So, all right. Then uh, the next bullet there, they allow for compile time checking for type safety. I uh, just talked about type safety. So one of the things is if you have, say, a list of strings and you're adding to it, and then you're like trying to put an integer in there. Well, the compiler knows that you're dealing with a list of strings. It's going to be like, hey, you're trying to put an integer in there, and I'm expecting strings. And so it's going to stop you from doing that, just like we, we saw with our example a minute ago, how it, it can tell, hey, wrong, wrong data type. So we want to, um, these provide that extra assurance or security that um, you're not screwing up your data types when you're dealing with, uh, when you declare the list. Now, one of the things that, um, when I was looking in, like I said, generics are, to me, sound very simple, similar, excuse me, to the templates in C++. And I was like, oh, well, that's pretty much kind of what I thought that was. And um, I was looking through, and one of the things that uh, I discovered is that even though they kind of work the same way as a developer, you'll see the same results. Uh, in the back end, they lose a whole lot of the benefits of the, the generics because one of the things that the generic does is because, because you're not specifically declaring that data type, it doesn't have to have those five different methods for a specific data type. With a template, what it does is it generates them anyway. And so, um, have y'all had C++ at all? I mean, mm -hmm. some of you said you, a little bit. So, have you used templates in C++? Mm -hmm. A little bit? Okay. Yeah. And what? Okay. So, they, as far as, like, your front end, as far as what you're seeing when you're coding, you, it should be very similar, like the, the syntax of the way you create a generic. But, um, on the back end, uh, what's actually happening is uh, it, it's just going in and, like, peeping out code for you. <laughs> for you on the back end. So um, you you don't get that benefit of, you know, the smaller files. And um, also, it doesn't have to, um, when we use generics, we don't have to do the, the boxing and unboxing with, uh, when you do the casting. So um, rather than saying, hey, I have an object. Oh, that object is an integer. And then we have to create, you know, tie up our memory. And then, okay, that integer gets pulled back over into some other uh, base type. So you don't, you lose performance time. Uh, you lose performance time um, that uh, you would have if you set these, um, set the generic up using an object and just casting it as you went. So, I mean, you can do it that way. I know um, some of the projects I used to teach in in Java, they would, they would have you do that apparently from, from what I understand, Java doesn't implement generics as well as C Sharp does, and maybe they're working on that. I don't know. But um, in any case, C Sharp it apparently is the pinnacle of <coughs> handling generics and uh, the, the way uh, they deal with the memory management. So um, being able to to not do that conversion when you're dealing with just a generic object and then converting it, it's going to make everything go make your project run faster and um, be a lot easier. All right, um, when we're declaring our generics, we can, um, we can use it and just set up constraints so that uh, you give it some idea. So you, you can, it doesn't have to be, oh, it's just any type and that's, that's all you know about it. You can say, well, I want all of the types that, um, for instance, have an empty constructor or um, be because whatever you set it up as then you can still utilize those restrictions that you set up so they call them constraints um, so um, I have an example of those and we'll switch over I'll say my last little point there that it, uh, it avoids errors for type checking and we've kind of talked about that a little bit already so all right so let's go and look at what Generics look. Do y'all know what they look like? Have y'all seen them? Do y'all have y'all used generics? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Okay, maybe. Huh. Okay, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, skewed in the some drop. I use them. I use them for a long time before I knew what they were. So um, <laughs> I was like, and also the first time I saw them, I was like, what the heck? That's not something.
thing I'm used to saying. So, um, but I came from the world of Visual Basic, so um, they look a little bit different in Visual Basic than they do, and well, a lot of stuff looks different in Visual Basic. Visual cool. Basic looks like pseudo code, so. I can look above my head because I have no idea how Visual Basic looks like. Uh, <laughs> it looks a lot like pseudo code. If you ever had to write pseudo code for anything, that's really what it looks like. I, I, yeah. I used to teach a class and I would make them write pseudo the curriculum demanded that we write pseudocode and Visual Basic, and they were like, wait, I thought it was this, and I was like, oh, it's just slightly different. <laughs> it's just like a little bit different in, the way, in the, the way that we would force them to write pseudocode. And everything that I ever learned about pseudocode was like, yeah, it's just pretty much English language. You don't really have a syntax for it, but I had to make them write pseudocode in syntax, so it was kind of funny, but anyway. That was fun. So, all right, so what we're looking at here, this, this is a, a fun little uh, example that, I mean, it's, it's oversimplified, so I, I haven't even called it yet. But basically, um, all this method does is creates a new dictionary for you, you know. Um, and I'm pretty sure some of this is probably already written similarly, maybe in, in the background. Yeah, you are going to have to remind me to do that every time, sorry. Okay, so all I did was just create a nice little... Uh, console application. Now, we're looking out here, we say public static dictionary, then I've got two different types, and it doesn't matter if they're the same or different types when I set them up here. So T and K can be the same type, but they don't have to be. All right. And then my method name is create dictionary, and I'm going to pass in T and K types, and um, I'm sorry, I'm not passing them out. I, I said that wrong. Uh, I'm just telling uh, the compiler basically that I'm using generics inside this method. And then I set up constraints for the method. So here's where you see constraints. You'll see this too in um, Tim a lot when you're setting up constraints for types um, with interfaces and, and things like that. But all right, so. What I've said here is basically you can give me any type T as long as T has this new constructor. Because what I'm going to do is have it generate something new. And so in order for me to know that, in order for my code to be able to accept the fact that I can do that here, when I create it, I'll say new T and new K. In order for me to be able to do that, I have to say you can't give me a type that doesn't allow me to do that. All right, so that that's where you set up constraint, and I, and we have an example here to just show you how you do um, multiples. So I was fooling around with that and a little bit. So um, I don't, the syntax to me looks a little bit weird because you just put it out there instead of having some kind of separator for it or, or anything like that. But in any case, um, so we set up our definitions for it, and now we come down here and we create the new dictionary. So basically, I can. Send it anything. I can send it a couple of integers. I can send a string in it. Um, I can send it a, a customer and a, a doggy. Um, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as those classes have that new constructor, it'll let me set up a dictionary with it. And so, um, as you can see, it's it's not overly complicated. And hopefully, you guys have used this before. So, like list, man. I use list like all day long. Do y'all do y'all use those much? So I use those a lot, um, especially when you pull stuff back from the database and things like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's where you use it most of the time. Exactly. So, all right. And, oh, and a lot of times, you, you know, we, we use our dictionaries with that as well, too, when you're, like, setting stuff up. I think, what do we do it for, like, in Scrap? We had to use dictionaries for, for HTML extension methods. Uh, if you've ever dealt with, like, Razor. Um, Razor relies on it a lot, so you will see that, and, and oftentimes they're going to pass like three, four, five, you know, they're going to be using a lot of generic types depending on like what the method signatures are doing, so, yeah. but like that's, you see that a lot, mm -hmm. like just tons. Right, all over the code, so. Um, I know you guys probably have uh, have seen them before and probably used them before, and, and maybe already knew, knew what they were and things like that. Do you have any questions about them or, or like underlying things that, like, you understand why we use them and what what makes it faster, things like that. So, 
when a, when a good opportunity to use them would be. So. so just to clarify, without generics, basically the you like say you would have to create different method signatures that overloaded based on the types that you knew you were going to use. So like if you were going to pass in an integer and an integer or a string and an integer, you would have to create just a bunch of, of method overloads. Would that be like the comparable with, without generics? Yeah, well, it would either be that or you could pass in just objects. But again, if you do objects, then um, even though they're, you can still pass in any data type that you would like, um, it keeps you from be, it, it makes you do that, that boxing and unboxing, and so you have to be more careful with your data types because you're going to have to actually convert them in order to tell it because it's just looking for an object and, and so forth. And while they can be converted, you're going to lose performance on that by uh, doing that conversion manually every time. So, all right. So, do you all want me to show you what it looked like? Or do you kind of go, yeah, okay. All right, so if we didn't have this as a generic, and we wanted to do that example where we had a, a dog. <laughs> I'll just do int so we don't have to create a whole bunch of classes. So, um, actually, I told you I'm queen copy and paste. So. I do love to copy and paste. So, let me pull this out. So, um, dictionary has already been defined. Well, a dictionary already actually uses um, will it confuse y'all if I use the same character? Wait, no. Okay. We'll do that and then string. Okay. Alright. So, when we create our new dictionary, we can tell it what data types that we want. So, um, and, string, and that basically will create a dictionary of type in and string, right? Now, if I also wanted to have a dictionary that would uh, or create dictionaries of type in and end, right? So now we call this an int, pass in an int, this is an int. So now we have one that will send in an int and an int, and it'll give you back a dictionary of two ints. All right. And so for every time you wanted to alternate those data types, you'd have to set them all. And you know, and, and we could do the same thing with with objects if you wanted to do like a like a customer and and a and a dog. I don't know what to make here. Pet grooming store. So you, you're passing in a, a customer and a dog. I'm just not going to do that because then I'll have to create those classes to, to get squiggles off about that so um, in any case so you would have to do this for every type but in but because we can use generics we don't have to do that and I mean kind of, it's a little bit um, almost reflective in the sense that the dictionaries already use the generics for you so um, that makes it a lot easier to go create that that dictionary no matter what type it is so um, but nonetheless can you show how to use it, like, like in oh, like calling you actually mm -hmm. like call the method? Okay, so. Um, my great, my great variable types for a test, right? Okay, so 
Um, I have the option to create a dictionary or create one with the generic. So I'll do create dictionary. Right. So I can do create dictionary in 10, 3, and 4. Um, you can also do three and four, right? And that's not going to give me any any problem at all um, to to pass that in. But hopefully you knew that you were trying to put in a string because that's what it's actually going to, what method it's actually going to call. Now, um, I can, if I want to call my, um, my method that I use to create a dictionary with my generic, forgetting completely about that constraint well, that we said on that. Yeah, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, all right, so it looks a little bit different, obviously, when you call it, but now it's obviously you could see that it was protecting me. It was like, no, 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 you can't send it string because um, I don't have the capability of instantiating a brand new empty string for whatever reason. Uh, it seems kind of silly that they. I'm sure that there's a very good reason that Microsoft didn't do it. So, um, all right. So, so it's kind of important to note that the the two functions, the generic function and then the two overloaded functions, are not doing exactly the same thing because like because like one of them oh like like the two overloaded functions are actually creating uh, they're creating a dictionary that is putting some values in there. Oh yeah. And the, the generic is just creating a, a dictionary with you know, just the empty objects in there. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's true. And, and I just did that to show uh, one of the things. And maybe what I might need to do is just forget about this. Just change my return type and not be in there. And is that going to screw me up? So that's why generics are better. <laughs> yeah, way better. Um, it's always fun to just do this stuff off the top of your head. I feel like I'm doing uh, Don Don Hat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. We could just keep doing, I'm doing all this stuff. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, we could, we could set this here. Send me back a new dictionary, 
and here. Pass it a couple of new objects. And there are instantiation outside of. should be doing effectively the same thing without different data types. So yeah. Sorry, thank you for that. I didn't I didn't even think about the fact that I was changing my functionality. Alright, um this should just be pointless I think. Um it's always fun to see what happens, right? Intelligent a lot. I do. I rely on it. <laughs> I have a, a, a unhealthy dependency on it. We all do. I go to therapy though. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Intelligence. Tell me what I should code. <laughs> I can't. Know. Know all the of this 